He is risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to the Calvary Baptist Resurrection Sunday service. At this difficult and stressful time, it can be hard to experience the joy of the risen Christ. Like the women in the garden early on that first Easter morning, we feel grief. We are distant from each other and maybe feeling alone and hopeless. Scripture tells us that Mary stood weeping in the garden that morning, feeling alone and hopeless. But Mary wasn't alone. Jesus stood beside her just as he stands beside each of us. Mary's tears turned to joy when she beheld the risen Lord. The empty tomb means the world is never empty of hope. No matter how dark our Fridays feel, it's Sunday. The Lord lives. May the joy of Easter fill your hearts this morning as you join us in worship. Please join me in prayer. Loving Father, in this time of a worldwide pandemic, still we celebrate your presence with us. To offer you our praise and our prayers, our love and our obedience. While we cannot be together physically, still we worship together through your spirit. For you assure us that 
where two or three gather in your name, there you are with us. We rejoice in your love for us and in the life we have been given through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to recognize your presence here among us. Open our hearts to the love that you have for us and to open our minds to the truth you would reveal to us. All glory and praise to you, God, now and forevermore. Amen. This Resurrection Sunday, our scripture reading is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 5 to 10, and Revelations chapter 1, verses 4 through 8, and 17 and 18. Jesus gives the Beatitudes at the Sermon on the Mount. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And in Revelation, John writes, To the seven churches in the province of Asia, Grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he's coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys of death and Hades. Well, good morning, everyone, and a blessed Resurrection Sunday to you on this Easter of 2020. We praise God for the living hope that is ours in Jesus Christ, the one who overcame the power of sin and death and evil to bring us redemption, salvation, and great purpose for living. When I was a student at Eastern University in the early 1970s, I took a class in journalism from Reverend Dr. Norman Dupuy. And uh, Norman was also on staff at our American Baptist Church uh, headquarters in Valley Forge. And he shared a delightful story in class about one particular Easter Sunday sunrise experience that he had. He participated in an event at the ocean uh, one year. And it happened to be a rainy, cold, blustery day, cold, and there were some misgivings about actually having uh, the gathering for what appeared to be an exercise in survival. In fact, Reverend Dupuy shared with us in class that just as they were trying to figure out how to thaw the lips of the trumpeter from the mouthpiece to which they had become frozen and then send everyone home, they heard the sound of a horn and the sputtering of an old automobile as it coasted into the sand of the beach and came to an abrupt halt as the engine died. And out of the old Ford Model T emerged the pastor emeritus of the church 
in his late 80s, shouting enthusiastically and triumphantly with all the energy he could muster, He is risen, He is risen. Well, everyone's hearts were warmed with the sign of devotion and the experience of Christ's reservation, uh, uh, resurrection <laughs> that had not diminished by age in the life of this elderly saint. Well, there's another elderly saint for whom the joy of Christ's resurrection never dimmed, and it's the Apostle John, who was imprisoned on the lonely island of Patmos, 35 miles off the coast of Asia Minor in the Mediterranean Sea. Patmos was a death camp. It was a cruel place, a penal colony of mines and quarries. It was no Gilligan's Island. It was no place for a vacation in those days. Now, of course, it's a beautiful island with a beautiful port and filled with beautiful vineyards. It also happens to house the Monastery of St. John the Divine, which tourists can visit, and I had the privilege of doing so with a seminary tour group in the late 1970s. The Apostle John suffered on the island of Patmos. He was exiled there as a political prisoner, a detainee, a prisoner of conscience, because of his outspoken witness for Christ. Like Dietrich Bonhoeffer's letters and papers from prison, like Nelson Mandela's messages from Robbins Island, or Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter from a Birmingham city jail, John's letter of revelation is born out of suffering. It is written in code to bring hope and encouragement to a persecuted and suffering church. John receives a revelation, a vision from God, that affirms a risen, victorious, and exalted Christ. And that vision is shared with seven churches in Asia Minor, churches that were all on a particular mailing route. But the vision is also meant for the church universal in all times and in all places. Seven is always the symbol for wholeness and completeness in the scriptures. So the assurance of John's vision brings hope for the whole church in any time and place for all of us. The identification of Jesus as risen and exalted is amplified by John when he affirms in verse 5 of chapter 1 that Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. And the one who is risen and exalted is also identified as the crucified one who was pierced in verse 7 of our text. And that identification is extremely important for the Apostle John, because the triumphant Jesus for him is always the Lamb who was slain, whose cross has won the victory and liberated us from the forces of sin and death. It is by the victory of his cross that we are made a people now set apart for God's own special use, as he states, to be a kingdom and priests to serve God, his God and Father. John received vision and it gave him great comfort and courage as one who was separated from his brothers and sisters on the mainland. And John says in verse 10 of chapter 1, On the Lord's day I was in the Spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, Write on a scroll what you see, and send it to the seven churches. So John was in the Spirit on Resurrection Day, Resurrection Sunday, the day he knew his brothers and sisters in Christ would be gathering to break bread, lift up the cup, and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. And oh, how he missed them. But in the Spirit, John heard none other than the voice of the Lord himself. And he's given a description from on high of Christ that includes images for God that appeared in the Old Testament. And you can read those images which are listed in verses 13 to 16. But one example, uh, John sees Jesus Christ dressed in a long robe with a golden sash. And the dress of the risen Lord symbolizes Jesus' threefold eternal office of prophet, priest, and king. The risen Christ wears a robe of royalty, not that of a criminal on a cross. As God's prophet, he is the bringer of the truth of God to us. As priest, he has made a perfect sacrifice, 
and enables us, through the forgiveness of our sins, to enter the presence of God. And as king, he is the one who reigns forever in power and dominion, unlike the Caesars and the rulers of this world. The Lord is described in verse 8 as the Alpha and the Omega, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. So, as one with God, he is not only Lord over time, but he rules the entire universe. He is Almighty. Almighty, or the Omnipotent One, is a common title for God throughout the scriptures and throughout Revelation. And it's important to note that the Greek word for Almighty is Pantocrator. Pantocrator was a very important word in the life of the persecuted Christian community. So, and why is that? Well, for Christians suffering under Caesar, who is an autocrator, autocrat, or dictator, or emperor, knowing that they, the Christians, serve the Almighty, the King of the universe, provided tremendous comfort and strength. Caesar might rule citizens of an empire in limited ways, but God rules the cosmos. And God, who is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, will guide the course of history long after Caesar's death, and the cremation of Caesar's body in Rome. When John experienced the vision of the risen and exalted Christ and the Almighty King of the universe, he fell at the Lord's feet as though he were dead. And the Lord placed his right hand of comfort on John and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. In the 28th chapter of Matthew, this is the same message that came to the women who expected to, uh, to complete the anointing of Jesus' body following the Sabbath. A messenger of God, an angel, said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away, filled with holy awe and joy, running to tell the disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them on the road. Greetings, he said. They clasped his feet and worshipped him. And then they continued on their way to tell the disciples. Can you imagine how the experience of the risen Christ affected these women? Their hope in God's future and promise of God's presence now to sustain and inspire them would never ever be in doubt. My favorite comic strip has always been Peanuts by Charles Schultz. Charles Schultz was a Christ Christian and I love the way he brought elements of the human struggle and the quest for faith into his characters. In one of his illustrations, Charlie Brown is watching a golf match. And the announcer says, all right, golf fans, this is it. The last day of the match. The old pro has to make this hole. He's down to his last putt, and he can't play it safe. He has to go for it. There's no tomorrow. Well, little Sally walks in just in time to hear that last part, that last phrase, there's no tomorrow. And she goes into immediate panic mode. She's running outside now, screaming to all the kids. They've just announced on national television that there's no tomorrow. Run, hide, flee to the hills, run to the rooftops. In the last panel of the comic strip, the whole gang is huddled together on Snoopy's doghouse. Linus is clinging to his ever-present security blanket and laments, Somehow I never thought it would end this way. Folks, there are times when the voices of the prophets of doom begin to get to us, and we wonder if there will be a tomorrow. But today, praise God, we hear the needed message and that great and wonderful reminder again of our risen Savior and of his victory over the forces of death. In his resurrection, he assures us that there is a tomorrow full of hope and full of promise. And not only tomorrow, but today is full of hope and promise because of Jesus' victory and his promise of presence to us as the great I am. 
He is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. We can trust Him with our lives, and our lives are in His hands. He is our Alpha, our beginning. In the first chapter of the Gospel of John, the beloved disciple and apostle affirmed, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things were made through Him. In the fantasy novel by J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter begins to search out his identity, and Hagrid tells him the story of his birth, his beginning, and he begins to discover who he really is, and then he's able to make sense of his life. When we find our way back to Jesus Christ and we realize who we are as the children of God, we discover our true identity, and that it is rooted from the very beginning in the love of God made known to us in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord is our Omega, our ending, as well as our beginning. John's revelation affirms that wherever the road leads, whatever the future might hold, and no matter when or how it ends, Christ will be there to meet us. Jesus will be our ending, our ultimate destiny, and in his presence we will be made complete. Even now, friends, the living Lord is in our midst. He walks among his churches and in the fellowship of his people. Nobody who trusts in him will ever be defeated. Jesus promised that no one will snatch any one of his followers from his hands. So we can trust in the one who has sovereignty over our lives. We rest in his victory on this Easter Sunday. We proclaim that message. We live in the victory that he has already won for us on the cross and in his resurrection. In these trying and very challenging times, may Almighty God bless you with resurrection power for daily living as you look to the one who is your salvation and the one who has overcome all things for you, the Alpha and the Omega. On this Easter Sunday, with united voice, we proclaim to the whole wide world, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please bow with me in prayer, everyone. Gracious Lord and God, we give thanks for our victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks for his faithful witness. We give thanks for his faithfulness to suffering for the world on a cross. We give thanks for our redemption, for the forgiveness of sins. We give thanks for the one who is the Alpha and Omega, the one who is the great shepherd of the sheep that is his church. We give thanks that he's the bread of life. We give thanks that he's the resurrection and the life, that he's the light of the world. Lord, we pray for, for the confidence of his resurrection power in uh, the lives of all believers here and around the world. Be with us in our witness as we give witness to the presence of Christ, the living presence of Christ in our lives. Lord, bless your people here and throughout the world. And uh, may anyone... Uh, that is filled with a lot of despair and fear, know that there are signs of hope, Lord, through your living presence and power. We pray for those who are going through very hard times, especially those who've lost loved ones in the coronavirus. We continue to pray for your, your comfort, for your peace. We give thanks for signs of your light and presence. We continue to pray for, for an end to this uh, virus and uh, for, for victory over it. We continue to pray for a vaccine, and uh, we continue to declare the message, Lord, that you are a God of love, who continues to love us and gives himself to us in Christ. And we give thanks for the message of hope, for eternal hope that is ours in Christ. Uh, bless everyone in a special way today. Uh, we know we would all, all rather be together and worship, uh, celebrating uh, Christ's resurrection and Easter together. But uh, may we be connected, Lord, together again uh, by your Spirit uh, in these times in our homes. And uh, may we take the time to reflect and uh, to celebrate again uh, with loved ones in our homes uh, your resurrection. Bless our children. Bless our grandchildren, Lord. Uh, bless those two within our church family uh, going through difficulties. Uh, we pray for Yeka Kalikbo and uh, your healing presence upon him as he recovers from the coronavirus. Um, and uh, we pray too for, for Abigail, for Abby uh, Simpson, Lord, 
Um, uh, this uh, little girl who was rushed to the hospital the other day with 105 fever. Uh, we pray for relief for her and uh, be with the family, be with uh, her grandmother Tammy, her mother Jennifer as they await test results uh, from Leo Valley Hospital. Thank you, Lord, again for your presence uh, with us. Bless our church family. Uh, keep us strong in this uh, interim period. And we pray for the day when the church doors can open again and we can rejoice together. Uh, and we pray it all in your wonderful name. Amen. Glory be to God from whom all blessings flow. To my awesome church family, I would like to say our God is real. It has been a different and trying experience for me since last Thursday, April 2nd, when I developed the symptom of fever and later tested positive for COVID-19. God has been faithful to me and sure in control. Yes, my temp has been fluctuating, but all in all, it's been mild for the most part. Although feeling alone, but I do know that God Almighty is by my side and you're here with me in spirit as well. I've been exercising walking back and forth in my quarantining moments, pushing fluids, eating to some extent, and resting. <clears throat> I'm getting there in Jesus' name. May God bless you all so much. Thank you, Cavalry, and my family for all your thoughts, cards, text messages, prayers, and your encouragement you continue to share with me. Our Lord is risen indeed. Happy Easter to all of us. Let us keep the faith in the Lord. Let us not give God up. Indeed, there is power in the name of Jesus. I'm just led to conclude with just a little part of this song. I hope I'll get through. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is an army rising up. There is an army rising up. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. God bless us all, Calvary, and let us continue to serve the Lord and trust Him more than ever before. God bless us all.